Picture this, a dimly lit room, the flickering glow of a vintage television casting a warm, nostalgic hue across the worn out carpet. A hushed anticipation as you settled into your favorite armchair, perhaps with a bowl of buttery popcorn or a steaming cup of cocoa cradled between your palms. The year was 1958, and the screen came to life with a tale of resilience, solitude, and the indomitable human spirit. It was your first encounter with the old man and the sea, a cinematic masterpiece that has since etched itself into the very fabric of your memories. As the film's timeless narrative unfolded before your eyes, you found yourself transported to the deep, azure waters of the Gulf Stream, where an aging Cuban fisherman named Santiago embarked on a Herculean battle with a giant marlin. Each wave crashing against the weathered hull of his skiff seemed to resonate with your own struggles, your own triumphs, and the relentless pursuit of your dreams. And who could forget the masterful portrayal of Santiago by Spencer Tracy? His weathered face, etched with the lines of a lifetime spent at sea, conveyed a profound sense of determination that resonated with your very soul. It was a performance that transcended the silver screen making you feel as though you were right there, alongside Santiago, in his epic struggle for survival. Perhaps it was the hauntingly beautiful score that accompanied the film, or the way the camera captured the vastness of the ocean, both merciless and awe-inspiring in its grandeur. Whatever it was, the old man and the sea left an indelible mark on your cinematic journey, a memory you still hold dear. Now, as we delve into some fascinating facts about this cinematic gem, Prepare to be transported once more into the world of Santiago and his relentless battle with the sea's leviathan. Join us as we uncover the hidden stories, the behind-the-scenes magic, and the enduring legacy of a film that captured the essence of the human spirit like no other. The Old Man and the Sea, released in 1958, is a classic film adaptation of Ernest Hemingway's novella of the same name. The story revolves around Santiago, an aging Cuban fisherman, and his epic battle with a colossal marlin in the Gulf Street. Directed by John Sturges and starring Spencer Tracy as Santiago, the film beautifully captures the essence of Hemingway's work, emphasizing themes of endurance, determination, and the human connection to nature. The film's unique style lies in its minimalist approach, mirroring Hemingway's sparse prose. It showcases Santiago's solitary struggle against the elements, painting a vivid portrait of the old man's resilience. Trace's remarkable portrayal of Santiago, a character who embodies the indomitable spirit of the human soul, remains iconic to this day. The movie had a profound impact on popular culture, solidifying Santiago as a symbol of perseverance. It garnered critical acclaim, earning several Academy Award nominations and winning two Oscars. The Old Man and the Sea remains a timeless masterpiece, reminding us of the enduring power of the human spirit in the face of adversity, making it an enduring classic in the world of cinema. In 1958, the cinematic world was treated to the adaptation of Ernest Hemingway's iconic novella, The Old Man and the Sea. While Spencer Tracy took on the lead role of Santiago, the film production was not without its fascinating quirks. Spencer Tracy's commitment to his role as Santiago was unwavering. He flew from Los Angeles to Cuba to meet the literary giant himself, Ernest Hemingway, seeking the author's approval for his portrayal. This meeting of Hollywood legend and literary luminary added a layer of authenticity to the film's production. However, Tracy's dedication to authenticity extended only so far. Despite being asked to shed some pounds before filming commenced to better embody the emaciated Santiago, the actor decided not to heed this advice. He opted to maintain his usual physique, a choice that sparked discussions but did not deter his performance. Intriguingly, another connection to Hemingway's world could be found in the film's cast. Mary Hemingway, Ernest Hemingway's fourth wife and eventual widow, made a subtle appearance. She portrayed a blonde tourist at the end of the film, quietly crossing the street and taking a seat in a cafe. Though her role had no lines, her presence offered a poignant connection to the literary mastermind behind the story. These tidbits of trivia from the making of The Old Man and the Sea shed light on the blend of dedication and creative choices that shaped the cinematic adaptation. The meeting of Tracy and Hemingway, Tracy's refusal to alter his physique, and Mary Hemingway's cameo all contribute to the mystique surrounding this classic film. And there you have it, some captivating insights into the 1958 movie adaptation of The Old Man 
and the sea. Cinema buffs and literary enthusiasts alike continue to appreciate the unique confluence of talent and circumstances that brought this tale to the silver screen. In 1952, Humphrey Bogart, the iconic Hollywood actor, ardently sought to secure the film rights to Ernest Hemingway's celebrated novel, The Old Man and the Sea, through his production company, Santana Productions. Bogart felt an intense connection with the story's aging protagonist and was determined to bring the character to life on the silver screen, with the visionary Nicholas Ray set to direct. His aspiration, however, was thwarted, as the rights remained elusive. Tragically, Bogart's dream of portraying the old man never materialized, as he passed away in 1957. It was only in 1958, the year following Bogart's demise, that the film adaptation finally took shape, with his dear friend and fellow Hollywood legend, Spencer Tracy, stepping into the role of the aging Cuban fisherman Santiago. This poignant twist of fate added a bittersweet layer of history to the cinematic adaptation of Hemingway's masterpiece. In the end, The Old Man and the Sea became a testament to the enduring allure of both the novel and the film, forever linking the two Hollywood luminaries, Bogart and Tracy, to the legacy of Santiago and his epic battle with the Marlin. The movie's eventual realization was a poignant tribute to Bogart's unfulfilled dream, making it a timeless classic in its own right. And so, the tale of the old man and the sea weaves together the threads of literature, cinema, and the indomitable spirit of its characters, leaving an indelible mark on the world of storytelling and film. In the 1958 film adaptation of Ernest Hemingway's The Old Man and the Sea, several intriguing details enrich the viewing experience. Among them is a noteworthy casting choice, Felipe Pazos, J.R., portrayed the young boy who forms a crucial bond with the aging fisherman, Santiago. What adds an extra layer of intrigue to this is that Felipe Pazos, Jr. was the son of Felipe Pazos, S.R., who served as the president of the Banco Nacional de Cuba. Interestingly, the elder Pazos signature graced Cuban national band notes in both 1949 and 1960. This connection between the actor and the country's financial elite adds a unique historical dimension to the film. Additionally, another fascinating tidbit relates to Mary Hemingway, Ernest Hemingway's fourth wife, who made a discreet appearance in the movie. In a brief yet memorable moment at the film's conclusion, she played the role of a blonde tourist. Although she had no spoken lines, her presence as she crossed the street and took a seat in a cafe holds particular significance for fans of Hemingway's work. But perhaps the most captivating detail of all is the cameo by the renowned author himself. In a rare on-screen appearance, Ernest Hemingway can be spotted in the final scene, donning a tan baseball cap as he engages in conversation with other fishermen. This cameo marked his movie debut, making it a historic moment for both film and literature enthusiasts. The Old Man and the Sea is not just a classic tale of man versus nature, it's a film that weaves together the threads of family, literature, and history in a way that continues to captivate audiences to this day. The subtle connections between the cast and the real-world figures they represent serve as a testament to the rich tapestry of storytelling that underpins the cinematic masterpiece. In 1958, Warner Bros. brought Ernest Hemingway's literary classic, The Old Man and the Sea, to the silver screen, a production that bore both the weight of high expectations and some intriguing behind-the-scenes tales. Hemingway, known for his attachment to his works, initially joined the movie-making venture, even going as far as venturing off the coast of Peru for marlin fishing, aiming to find the perfect fish for the film. However, the extent of his involvement waned as time went on, Ultimately, the film's producers opted for a rubber marlin in stock footage for the fishing scenes, leaving Hemingway somewhat disappointed. He expressed his disillusionment by noting that Spencer Tracy, who portrayed the old Cuban fisherman Santiago, seemed more like a wealthy actor than a humble fisherman. Nevertheless, Tracy's performance earned him an Oscar nomination, a testament to his talent. Interestingly, before Spencer Tracy took on the iconic role, Humphrey Bogart made an attempt to secure the film rights to Hemingway's novel back in 1952. Bogart, through his production company Santana Productions, deeply identified with the character of the old man and was eager to bring him to life on screen, with Nicholas Ray slated to direct. However, Bogart's efforts were in vain, and the film didn't materialize until the year following his death, with his dear friend Spencer Tracy stepping into the lead role. 
As for Tracy, he was requested to shed some weight before the filming commenced, a common practice in Hollywood to fit the character's image. However, he chose not to comply with this request, perhaps believing that his acting prowess would overshadow any concerns about his appearance. In the end, The Old Man and the Sea became a noteworthy cinematic adaptation of Hemingway's beloved novel, capturing both the challenges of the sea and the essence of the aging fisherman's struggle. While the production had its share of quirks and challenges, it left an indelible mark on the world of cinema and Hemingway enthusiasts alike. As we sail towards the conclusion of our journey through the depths of the old man and the sea, I invite you to cast your thoughts back to that shimmering cinematic oasis of 1958. This timeless masterpiece, birthed from the indomitable pen of Ernest Hemingway and brought to life by the formidable Spencer Tracy, has weathered the tides of time, leaving an indelible mark on the cinematic seascape. In the midst of Santiago's relentless battle with the Marlin, did you find yourself resonating with the essence of perseverance, that unyielding spirit which propels us forward even when the odds seem insurmountable? Or perhaps it was the mesmerizing backdrop of the boundless ocean, a metaphorical canvas upon which the narrative of one man's struggle and triumph unfolds, that held you captive. As we part ways, I encourage you to share your cherished memories, your profound revelations, or simply your musings on this cinematic gem. Did it ignite a passion for literature, provoke introspection, or simply serve as a comforting vessel in the stormy sea of life? Your unique connection to this classic tale is a treasure worth sharing. Thank you, dear reader, for embarking on this cinematic odyssey with us. Your time and interest are deeply appreciated. Until our paths cross again in the realm of storytelling, keep the fires of curiosity burning bright, and continue to explore the vast seas of human imagination. With admiration for your curiosity and appreciation for your company, this outro is...